Что, пизда стрелингу, да? Ну, тарелка это это, офицерская была. О, зато кастрюля целая. Тарелки пили, да. Тепленькая, да? А, ну прохладненько это хорошо. Бокары разложили еще, блядь. Indians want to end employment with Russian armed forces. India and Russia are working to ensure early discharge of Indians recruited into the Russian armed forces, the Ministry of External Affairs of India said. In his visit to Moscow last week, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had raised the issue with Russian President Vladimir Putin. We are aware of about 50 Indian nationals who currently wish to end their employment in the Russian armed forces, spokesman of Ministry of External Affairs Randhir Jaiswal said. These are cases where the individual or his stroke her family members have approached us for assistance in securing their early discharge, the spokesperson said during his weekly media briefing. Jaiswal said the matter has been pursued with Russia at various levels, including at the leadership level. The Prime Minister raised this matter during his recent visit to Russia. The Russian side has responded positively to our request. Both sides are working for early discharge of Indian nationals, he said. Earlier, relatives have appealed to the government of India in the past two weeks on behalf of some of the dozens of Indian men who have been tricked into fighting for the Russian army and want to return home. Last month, the Ministry of External Affairs said the issue of Indian nationals serving with the Russian army remains a matter of utmost concern and demanded action from Moscow over it. On June the 11th, India said two Indian nationals who were recruited by the Russian army had recently been killed in the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict, which took the number of such deaths to four. Following the deaths of two Indians, the Ministry of External Affairs demanded a verified stop to further recruitment of Indian nationals by the Russian army. India is one of Russia's major economic partners and has exponentially increased its imports of Russian crude oil in recent months. Russia's vast stocks of Soviet-era weapons are running out due to war in Ukraine. The Russian Federation might feel the scarcity of equipment it inherited from the USSR next year. That's according to The Economist, although the International Institute for Strategic Studies estimated that in February of this year, Russia may have had about 3,200 tanks in storage to draw on, up to 70% of them have not moved an inch since the beginning of the war. A large proportion of the T-72s have been stored uncovered since the early 1990s and are probably in very poor condition, the article reads, citing the IISS experts. They have reached a conclusion that Russian tank and infantry vehicle refurbishment from storage is expected to hit a critical point of exhaustion by the second half of 2025. Ironically, many Soviet weapons and components are in Ukraine and Kharkiv was the main producer of turrets for T-72 tanks. Additionally, it is suggested that Russia lacks workers who can maintain the necessary production. Most intelligence sources report that in the two years of war, Russia had lost about 3,000 tanks and 5,000 other armored vehicles. For example, Dutch Oryx has either photo or video evidence of 3,235 tanks destroyed, but adds that the actual number is likely significantly higher. Alexander Goltz, an analyst at the Stockholm Center for Eastern European Studies, says Vladimir Putin has the old Politburo to thank for the huge stockpiles of weapons built up during the Cold War. He says Soviet leaders knew that Western military kit was much more advanced than their own, so they opted for mass, churning out thousands of armored vehicles in peacetime in case of war. 
Before its demise, says Goltz, the Soviet Union had as many armored vehicles as the rest of the world put together. When the then Russian defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, boasted in December last year that 1,530 tanks had been delivered in the course of the year, he omitted to say that almost 85% of them, according to an assessment by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, a London think tank, were not new tanks, but old ones, mainly T-72s, old T-62s, and even some T-55s dating from just after the Second World War. That had been taken out of storage and given a wash and brush up. Since the invasion, about 175 reasonably modern T-90M tanks have been sent to the front line. Annual production this year could be approaching 90.